Yo, what's up? In this video, I'm going to show you the second-hand market in Norway for EVs. So, um, I will just show you the screen recording. You don't even have, a, you don't even have to see my face. So, anyway, I'm going to show the filters here. Just second-hand cars for sale, not leasing or anything. And then I just check the box here for electricity. And then we sort by low to high. And First, I should show you that some of these cars here, they appear here as parts, or I mean car parts. So this one is not drivable, just spare car, whatever, spare part, whatever. So we will not look at that, but the first drivable EV you will find in the lowest price is this one, Citroën Saxo. So it's, um, well, I haven't tried it. Uh, by the way, uh, most of the cars I, I've actually driven, but as for this one, uh, no, I don't know much about it other than that. It drives, it has, uh, what kind of battery is it? It actually has uh, a gasoline heater for uh, for winter. So that's good, I guess. Other than that, I actually don't know too much about it. And there is another one here, uh, Buddy. I should mention, oh yeah, Buddy, by the way, I will test one eventually, hopefully soon. The Buddy started its life as Qet from Denmark and then uh, some Norwegians took over the production and they call it Buddy. So it's basically a Qet. So you, you'll find two different names basically. And uh, this one is registered as an L7E and that class. So it's, um, it's a motorcycle with four wheels and you can legally drive it with class B driver's license. And um, the advantage is that um, for uh well it depends which which city in norway but um in oslo you have to start paying some toll roads for at least for the city but with electric i mean yeah, yeah but but it's a reduced price but for these ones which is the l7e then you don't pay toll roads and also you can park it the the, the wrong way because it's not very long so that's always nice uh, then I don't know too much about this because I haven't tried it yet, but you see it goes 50 kilometers at least But it's only AC charging no fast charging or whatever So it's a city car for commuting or something so I don't know too much about it So I can't uh, tell it but um, the first cars you will uh, I would say the first proper cars you can buy for a decent price is are these three These are the triplets and they just happen to be here on the same screen here. So you see the IMEAV ION and what well, is ION? Okay, well, C0. I don't have C0, my bad. But at least two of the triplets are here. So if you have about 30,000 NUC, you can get one of these. And I recommend them in this price range because these cars they have fast charging and they have four doors. It looks like a car at least. And it, you can also drive it on the motorway. So it's. Um, it actually functions as, as a, a regular car and since you have fast charging at least it supports around 35 kilowatt wind charmer plug here then you can actually use it for daily driving and it's flexible in case you are low on juice you can just fast charge it up so no problem at all really so it's actually a good ev for the money but don't expect any premium luxury stuff for the interior is very sparse it's just hard plastic everywhere you don't even have uh, you don't even have cruise control and uh, not even touchscreen or whatever so very basic basic interior but it works as a car so for 30,000 nook it's good it's good actually I recommend it in this price range wait hang on did I press the wrong key now yeah I did oh shit and um, uh, let's see okay so you see that in, in the lower price range here, this one is weird um it's a Fiat 500 is it a Fiat 500e I don't it seems way too cheap for a Fiat 500e because they usually go for at least twice or three times more than this. So I don't know what kind of bastard uh, Fiat this is because um, the Fiat 500e is supposed to have the charge port in the back here somewhere. This one, and well, actually, it has it there. Hmm. But I don't know why they show me this cable. You see? So what? Wh wh what is this thing? Is it a bastard Fiat? So I, I don't know really. Uh, try to read a little bit about it here. You see, it's a um, it's Fiat 500 micro uh, So I don't know what it is, um, but it's it's like a weird uh, thing. What you want to look for are those for thirty thousand nook roughly. You see here. So in this price range, you have some some of these, and this one, by the way, is not functional. I mean, it's not working. So the twenty-four ki <laughs> not twenty-four twenty-four kilowatt hour 
uh, is not working. You see here, uh, the gearbox is uh, kaput uh, and also the motor is kaput, so they just sell it as parts. But uh, I will not show you all of these cars. I will give you the impression. Okay, okay, by the way, yeah, I should mention this one. Think, it's a Norwegian product. It's made of plastic and it's an EV. Uh, well, is this also L7e? I'm not sure if this one is L7e also. But um, uh, the thing about the thing is that it only has AC charging. Let me see, do we have any pictures? No DC fast charging. So again, somewhat limited, but it's a cool car and you, it's hard to get dents on it because it's made of plastic on the outside at least. And it's small, compact. I have driven it once only on a test track, that's it. So, uh, and that was a very long time ago. So, but it, okay, it's, um, it's only a two seater. So you actually have some decent space in the back and all that. But other than that, I don't know it too much, but it was popular in Norway some uh, 10 years ago. And it's still, yeah, but uh, it's a little bit pricey. If you have 40,000 nook, get the triplets instead. Unless you just want this for as a, as a collector's object, of course. But uh, for practical use, you see lots and lots of these triplets. You can grab one for a decent price and maybe, yeah, just choose whatever uh, you want. But this one, though, it's the first leaf to appear. And the leaf actually is a better car than the triplet because mm -hmm. the leaf, what was that? Okay, uh, um, the leaf has way more space, and when you compare them, leaf actually has cruise control and a touchscreen and some decent trunk space. Except that the, if the first leaf had this weird, weird beam here, it's the stealing up the space. I don't know what the heck they put there, but the the later versions they have uh, they don't have this one at least, so you have more space. But o o other than that, leaf is a decent car. You see here touchscreen, more premium interior, more looks more like a car compared to um, to the triplets, but it costs slightly more. But overall, if you have the money, get the Leaf in this price range. I don't think we have more uh, pictures of that now. Uh, so, uh, and then if you just keep, okay. Next one, Twizy. Twizy is, um, it's the L7e, so it's also regular as a, as a motorcycle and four wheels. So you can uh, you don't have to pay toll road. That's good, but it lacks fast charging. It has a tiny battery. It's somewhat underpowered unless you chip it. You can also boost it up to be faster, but it's only a two seater, and this one doesn't even have the window. Uh, so I've tried this a couple of times. Uh, it's a interesting car to drive, but to me, uh, oh yeah, the, oh you put it in the window. All oh, right, to me. Uh, for a more serious car, uh, this one doesn't do it. It doesn't cut it. It's too small. You can't bring any cargo with you. You can't... It's very limited what you can do. So, of course, as a... Huh, what the heck? What did it do? Okay, but, but for, for a commuter? Yeah, okay, that would work. You see, only Shuku charging here. So, very limited. And for the price, I feel like uh, it's overpriced. 45,000 work for Twizy. You can get leaf or, or twiplet instead um, and those cars can actually go on the road trip you can technically you can drive a triplet or a leaf from oslo to bergen also and then you see um over here if you just keep scrolling we will see that uh, the lower price range is dominated by these triplets and leaves uh, but this one i will not cover these vans which are just for transportation i will cover the passenger van yeah i will do that one once we find one it's just gonna take a quick look at this one because there's one thing i'm looking for uh let me see if we go for uh oh, do we have some... yeah, yeah yeah here if you look at oh why is it loading so slow if you look at this one one two three four five six seven eight nine oh nine bars that's a little bit low, but don't trust this blindly. It's supposed, I mean, a, a fresh car is supposed to have 12 bars. So nine bars sounds a little bit low, but what you should do if you want to go for a leaf is that you should get OBD uh, dongle somewhere and then get leaf spy and then you plug it in. The, the um, OBD, I, mean, I can show you here maybe. Uh, everyone in the mother uses leaf spy. Okay, here, it's, the, it's down here somewhere. The, the OBD port. You plug it in, fire up Live Spy, and then you will see state of health. Because those bars, they can be lying. I heard recently, just today, some guy, he bought a 30 kilowatt hour Leaf with 12 bars, 
turns out sterile health was around 85% only. So he had 15% degradation. So, um, but sterile health can't be trusted 100%, but it will give you some indication of what, what the state of the battery is. So yeah, just bear in mind that because the leaf doesn't have active cooling. So if uh, you get one with high mileage, like this 150,000 kilometers, you might only have 20 kilowatt hour. Well, actually, no, 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 less. Uh, this is 24 kilowatt hour. You might, you might have, uh, I don't know, 16, 17 kilowatt hour left or something. Yeah, this one, when it's brand new, it's supposed to have 21 kilowatt hour. But uh, yeah, maybe you're down to 18 or whatever, you know. So let's see, if you keep scrolling, you see the same again. So uh, yeah, you see that we, we can just skip some of these. Okay, for 59,000 Nook, you can get a Renault Fluence. And I personally haven't tried driving the Renault Fluence. I've seen them around, uh, but they are somewhat rare in Norway. Uh, in At Jeju in Southern, uh, I mean, South uh, Korea, you find lots of these, but this is like a weird unicorn in Europe. You don't see them uh, around but for a good reason, because I think it's not a very good EV. It see here, it probably started life as a fossil and they, they was, this was basically the first attempt for Renault to make an EV. So you basically have less space than a Zoe, less, um, I'm not sure how to put this, less, less um, good EV basically. <laughs> um, but again, I'm just assuming because I haven't tried the car, but based on what I've seen, it doesn't look very nice. It's just, uh, yeah, and it doesn't have fast charging. I don't know what kind of charging capability this is. This is probably what, huh? 50 kilowatt. That must be output power. Yeah, 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 68 horsepower. Yeah, People mix up kilowatt and kilowatt all the time, and it can be confusing. So this is one of the cars I would suggest to uh, shade away from uh, try if you have 60,000 look try to go for these other more mainstream EVs but okay let's keep looking oh e up oh yeah for 62,000 look you can get the e up this is the ch cheapest e up so far so e up is nice because it's a fairly quick car it's also um well it has cruise control <laughs> uh, it has fast charging actually this is the first car that came out with CCS one standard and uh, the voltage is fairly high so you can actually receive about four uh, over 40 kilowatt for a while until it overheats but it seems to be somewhat resistant from overheating so you can actually drive it on semi-long trips with it uh, it's compact it's also um, fairly efficient not too thirsty but the interior is kind of sparse. Well, there's no interior picture here, but the interior is a little bit basic. But overall, though, it's a good car. I was, uh, I wanted to buy one actually, but then we changed our mind because we weren't ready for it anyway. So it's a good car for the money if you want a uh, Volkswagen. Um, and also, yeah, with, with the EOP, you also supposed to get app support, right? Just like eGolf. But okay, let's keep, oh, okay, okay, smart for two. Now, I haven't tried the smart, so I can't tell how good or bad they are, but I know there's a whole smart club, smart cult, uh, whatever, community, and they love the cars. So, yeah, um, I can't tell, again, how they are, but uh, they are not too common in Norway, at least, for some reason. Uh, maybe more common in other countries, and you get them also as a four-seater, whatever. So I can't say too much about them, unfortunately. Okay, let's keep scrolling. Yeah, here we have another Leaf uh, with 93,000 kilometers. It doesn't say which version, but you can expect that this is a 24 kilowatt hour Leaf. 65,000 Nook, let's take a little look at it. So if you have 65K and you want to get a Leaf, uh, let's check it out. Okay, it looks, it looks fairly nice from the outside. Where is it? Oh, just uh, schlaffs. But one picture you will be looking for is some, some cells, uh, some people, they will take a picture. Whoa, she. Oh, damn. Okay, but this is one I want to show you. This car has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten bars. Ten out of twelve bars. So this is an okay indication that the battery might be in good health. But in the end, you have to plug in a, a leaf spy and then see what the state of health is to get more indication. I think also in this leaf spy, you can also see if there's some something weird going on with the battery and all that. And you can also see in leaf spy. 
um, how much DC fast charge this car has done versus AC charging. Was, or it says how many DC charging sessions, but you get an idea of how much DC has been doing because in my opinion, too much DC fast charging will degrade the battery faster. I have several indication on that, but overall, I mean, it's still a good buy to get the Leaf if you want that kind of car, of course. Oh, okay, all right, Ford Focus Electric. So um, this would be the cars that you want to avoid. I have just checked out the Ford Focus. I haven't driven one. I just check out the, the later version, this 215. Yeah, I think I check out the 218 Ford Focus. The problem with Ford Focus is that it's a compliance car. It wasn't built. They just took a fossil Focus and they put in some batteries and they didn't, the problem is they didn't bother with fast charging. Uh, I don't know what, how fast the onboard charger is. Uh, it's, it's shit. This car is shit shade away from it. Well, there's lots of pictures. Let's, let me show you. Uh, there, there's got to be a picture of the front, uh, the other side, the trunk. Uh, da, 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 ding! Is it, look here. What, what the heck is this? Huh? What is this scheisse in here? This is the battery pack. <laughs> so you get shit uh, trunk space. Uh, yeah. Uh, and it's just a poor excuse for, uh, there was other pictures. It's a poor excuse for an EV, really. Uh, you want the car to be able to haul stuff or whatever, at least bring your luggage for weekend or whatever, but it, uh, you, you don't want to go on a weekend trip with this because, uh, why is it so dirty? Because it doesn't support fast charging. You see, it, everything just looked very fossil. So they didn't put anything into making it uh, a good EV, so just, uh, for the money, for 68,000 Nook, get a Leaf instead. And here is the first Zoe to appear. Now, Zoe is overall a good car and also very popular. Uh, let me check again. Uh, what, but this is the this is most likely the 22 kilowatt hour low f Zoe, the first generation Zoe. And the problem with Zoe, see the bucket here. The problem with Zoe is that it needs 400 volt TN. And in Norway, uh, there not every house has it. My house doesn't have it. I have the 230 volt uh, IT uh, power uh, net, what is it called, power system. So I can simply not charge Zoe at home unless I have this bucket here, which is a transformer. It transforms it up to 400 volt so the Zoe can take it. But the Zoe, doesn't have DC fast charging. The latest one has it, but this one doesn't have it. Now it uses the, um, the Camelon charger, which is the, it uses a drivetrain as an onboard charger. And the problem with the Camelon charger is that it has 80% efficiency. So if you can get those Q versions with um, 43 kilowatt AC, then uh, you can actually charge fairly fast with a Zoe. But in Norway, those 43 kilowatt uh, charging stations are almost non-existent. And like I mentioned, with the poor efficiency, so even if you charge it with 43 kilowatt AC, you only get around 35 kilowatt into the battery. The rest is just lost in heat. Uh, but of course, if you live in Germany, you have more of those. And also in, in, uh, in Denmark, I believe. So that's why they are more uh, also very popular in those countries. So it depends which country you live in. But I should also mention that bucket here, that this one, if, if I want to charge at home, I have to use this transformer. And then there's also another step of loss in the transformer. Hopefully not that too much. Yeah, usually transformers are fairly efficient, but uh, most of the loss is in a Camelon charger. So... How efficient is the car then when you have to consider the charging loss and all that? Uh, so personally, I wouldn't buy a Zoe. I would rather go for a Leaf or a Triplet than if I had uh, 80,000 Nook. <laughs> Aha, uh -huh, okay, Fiat 500e. Yeah, uh, should, the, should this be one of the cars I recommend or uh, recommend, recommend not to get? Uh, this would be a car I recommend you to not get because it's a compliance car. It's a car Fiat built just to meet some uh, emission uh, numbers. So it's a, it's a poor excuse for an EV. It doesn't have AC, I mean, it doesn't have DC fast charging support. The range is shitty, but okay, it's not that thirsty, that's good. But the whole car is just a fossil car that's been forcefully muted into an EV. And you have very poor... Um, backseat place a spot and also the trunk is also tiny so you can't really use it for anything and this one okay there's some stuff here uh, i'm not sure okay there's some add-ons there i don't uh, want to talk too much about that one but 
overall, you guys have seen, if you guys seen my video, I complained so much about this car because it, it the, even the onboard uh, charger, this one is Shuko, but you can also charge it on type two, but the onboard charger is only around five kilowatts. So don't expect to go on the long trips with this. It, it doesn't work really. And this is winter, the rain is also shit. So for 80,000 nook, uh, uh, get other cars instead. And the cheapest ENV 200 is here at 92,000 nook. And this is, well, huh. Yeah, this is actually correct. 80 kilowatt, that's the power, that's the output power. That's about 107 horsepower. It's the 24 kilowatt hour. Let's take a closer look at it. I've driven ENV 200 many, many times, the van version and the Evalia. So the, when it, okay, it doesn't say Evalia, but Evalia means the passenger version. They are different though. The Evalia will have us, you have space, or I mean, it's open between the, the driver and the passenger side here. Whereas the van has a, a wall there and the van has a slightly different door and everything. But uh, the one I will be talking about is the Valia. And this is, I feel like it's actually an underrated car because, okay, it has a tiny battery. So don't expect any crazy range from this. Let's say 60 to 80 kilometers of range. And uh, consumption is not too crazy as long as you don't go too fast. But the strength of Valia is that it has a shit ton of space. So if you have a big family, you should get one of these if you need lots of space. But this is a five-seater and you see, let me see there, you see lots and lots of space. You can bring all your uh, cargo, whatever, luggage, bicycle, whatever, just put them in here and you still have lots of space for the family and they sit, they don't sit too cramped also. So that's, that, that's the beauty of the, the ENV 200. But ENV 200, um, it has active cooling unlike Leaf, but for for the cooling to work you have to have the car on while you are fast charging and even when you do so it will eventually also overheat slowly but up, up until a certain point so it's a little bit cumbersome but it works so again if you have a family and you just need lots of space and you kind of stop and take and chill a little bit on the trip then this is really a bargain for you but the interior here is more sparse and more plastic than leaf they, they still reuse some of the in, infotainment here, but not, not the dashboard here. And also the soundproofing here is horrible. It's one, it's actually the noisiest car I've tested. So that's just something you have to live with. <laughs> but other than that, it's, uh, it's a good choice if you need lots of space. What was the price of it again? Uh, yeah, 92,000 Nokia. This is the cheapest ENV 200, but you will find more expensive ENV 200, but not uh, down here. And if you have 100,000 Nook, you can get an e-Golf. So e-Golf is bigger than e -up and it's also more premium in many ways. And it has, well, it depends, but you can get them with um, adaptive cruise control. Let me check if this one has it. This one ha doesn't have the leather interior, but um, okay. The space is actually fairly good for an EV. And oh, okay, what the heck, it's just kind of flipped there. But um, let me see there. I'm looking for, yeah, yeah, this one has adaptive cruise control. So. Wow, that's a sweaty <laughs> steering wheel. Well, anyway, uh, once you disinfect this car, it will work great for commuting. Uh, the range, though, is not the best because this is based on 20, um, 24 kilowatt hour battery. And in winter, you can expect around, well, I mean, well, actually in winter, summer, you can expect around uh, 80 to 100 kilometers of range, depending on how fast you drive and all that, and with summer and winter. So it's a good commuter car, but not that great for driving long trips unless you want to wait a bit. And also the problem with the uh, Golf is that the voltage in the pack is a bit low. It's around 300, 350 volt. And it means that when you're fast charging it on DC, because the, the 50 kilowatt fast charger is limited to 125 amp, then you usually get around 35 to 40 kilowatt only. And also Golf, E-Golf doesn't have active cooling. So if you drive too far and fast charge too much, it will overheat and then you charge shit slow. So um, the newer pack has better, slightly better uh, capabilities, but this one, uh, it's mostly in the city, but it's, it's a very nice compu commuter car for 100,000 Nook. But I think there are also other, equal, maybe better uh, choices if you have about 100,000 Nook. I'm gonna start searching for it now. Oh yeah, 410,000 Nook, you can get first generation i3, you see those two? And this is 125 kilowatt, that's the power, 170 horsepower. So the i3 is 
a fairly good car, uh, especially for city. It's uh, it's nice. Now the the advantage with i3 is that the voltage on the pack is higher. It has active cooling. It has some uh, nice. Uh, it's supposed to. I think it has also some heat scavenging and all that. I'm not sure how uh, advanced it is, but. Uh, it also charges fairly fast. Now, only 22 kilowatt hour battery. I think 18.9 of it was available. And um, it's, a, it's a quick car. And 170 horsepower, it's made of carbon fiber. It's a fairly light car and all that. And when it comes to uh, interior, it's also this, this funky, uh, um, uh, how do you put this, environmentally friendly, uh, carbon neutral in, uh, interior and uh, easy to drive front to drive also lots of space in the interior here you see nice open space i like it uh, but the the doors here is not my favorite because okay you can open it to get nice access easy access to the back but it also has some disadvantages when you close the door you have to uh, how is this good you have to um uh, you have to unbuckle in order to open doors so people can go out something like that so it's a little bit uh, clumsy but i guess people like the doors right and also i see that people with i3 they love the cars um but uh okay it doesn't show you here but the trunk space in the i3 is a little bit um, limited because um uh, yeah, we, there's no picture of it here because um the i3 is not born electric it's born fossil because they they designed it to have a rex engine the rex engine is under the trunk here for the rex version and then for the bev they just put a shaft there where the rex engine is supposed to be and you cannot utilize the trunk space so trunk space is somewhat limited but overall though it's a good choice so if i would choose between the e-golf or an i3 well it depends because the problem again with the i3 is that it doesn't have a radar for uh, adaptive cruise control whereas the, the e-golf has it the i3 uses only camera and in low light conditions or if you go from a tunnel or something there are very actually sometimes very often that the the adaptive cruise control disables because of the light conditions are not met or whatever so that's a little bit annoying the, i personally i think i uh, bmw should have put uh, um, a radar in the i3 but overall though it's a, it's a very decent car and fun to drive uh, but when it comes to noise by the way i feel like the i3 is a little bit noisy because it has frameless windows whereas e-golf is actually very nice and quiet so yeah you can see it here frameless windows well actually you can see it yeah okay but uh, let's just keep going oh but for 110,000 000 nook you can also get a kia soul so um okay i just mentioned e-golf and i3 and then also you should also consider the soul this is the 24 kilowatt hour soul now the 24 kilowatt hour is the net capacity and i believe the net cross capacity should be around 27 kilowatt hours so you actually get quite big battery actually way bigger than the other ones that i mentioned and um, the range here is quite good you can expect 100 to 120 kilometers of range now it's a little bit boxy that's a disadvantage so if you drive fast it will be thirsty especially in winter but you have lots of space this car beats the i3 in space trunk space and also passenger size I mean, in here it's also nice let me see here here you see nice spacious interior with good uh, headroom and the interior is okay and it's just a matter of taste also but uh, it has touchscreen and overall i think the interior is is nice looking and nice to to use once you get used to it here you see some of the trunk there's a, you can also open this one to put more stuff under there i don't think it shows in the picture no uh this is yeah the infotainment system in the in the ego oh, sorry in the soul is also nice i like it and also soul supposedly supports 100 kilowatt on the channel plug you don't see it here but it has channel plug so uh, the problem is that there aren't really many 100 kilowatt chandemos around here. And the ones, the few ones you have in Norway are very expensive. It's run by E.ON. Uh, yeah. So overall, though, uh, it's not very, um, I mean, it's, you can't expect that, that fast speed. Yeah, that was what I was trying to say. But uh, the Kia, though, has active cooling. It's in the trunk, actually. It, there's a little fan under here in the trunk so it doesn't overheat and it can actually take nice charging speed so this car can be used for long trips or you if you have to top up in the city it also works great it doesn't rapid gate it charges fast but it doesn't have app support and it doesn't um it doesn't have adaptive cruise control that's the minus because the e-golf and i3 has adaptive cruise control and they also have app support so app support is nice for when you want to preheat the car or check battery status or whatever. Oh, Mercedes-Benz B-Class Electric B250E. 
this will be in the list of cars I recommend you to avoid. I tested it a couple of times. That was a long time ago in 2016. I didn't like it at all because, okay, it's powerful. It has actually 180 horsepower, but this one has Tesla drivetrain, Tesla batteries, Tesla inverter, Tesla charger, and Tesla motor. And I don't know what they did when they implemented or they, they built this car because it's really thirsty. You can expect 200, 250 watt hour per kilometer with this car. So you comes, it comes with 36 kilowatt hour battery. And, and also the, some of these versions are software locked to uh, 30 or something kilowatt hour. But even with 36 kilowatt hour, you can't really go that far. But the biggest problem with the, the B-Class electric is that it doesn't have DC fast charging support. So charge put it back there, I guess. Wait, is it just external pictures here? But you can only AC charge it. And they only bothered to put 11 kilowatt onboard charger. So no DC fast charging, 11 kilowatt. Uh, so you see, compared to Zoe, Zoe at least has 22 kilowatt AC charging. And Zoe doesn't use that much electricity. But this one is thirsty and with 11 kilowatt, it's it's bad it's bad you can't use it for long trips uh, and in the city you will you want to be wasting lots of energy just to run this thing uh, but interior wise though it's it's nice though i mean it's a mercedes interior and space wise is also quite large so of course if you don't care too much if you just want a large commuter and you want the mercedes then go for it now that was a long time ago when i tested it so i don't um I didn't measure noise back then, but I suspect that it should also be quiet in terms of Mercedes, you know. But uh, as an EV, it's shit. Yeah, so you just have to know the limitation of this car before you can see the buying one. And it's, oh wow, it costs 120,000 Nook. We should find what other cars you can get for 120,000 Nook. And when you look at these eagles, you see in this price range, lots and lots of eagles will appear. And you see some of them are titled with 190 kilometers. Some of them is titled with 85 kilowatt. This is both true because the 100, this, these are the 24 kilowatt hour uh, eagles. They have 190 kilometers of uh, uh, NEDC range. So you will not get that. You will get around 100 kilometers of real world range. And then the 85 kilowatt here is the output power, so it's about 100 uh, horsepower. Uh, so if you're looking for the newer Golf, the 35.8 kilowatt hour, it will be 100 kilowatt, or they, some of them call it the FL300, which is the, the 300 kilometers of NEDC range, and FL is facelift. Well, actually, it's not really that much different. I don't know why they call it facelift, but uh, the first 30 kilowatt hour leaf appears here. So this is the better leaf if you want a leaf the, the 30 kilowatt hour leaf it has a battery that is more heat resistant so they call it the lizard battery and it means that even if you drive it on long trips and the battery overheats it oh what's a funky interior but it will actually be able to sustain so okay charging speed and actually all oh, up until 85 percent you get pretty nice charging speed and you can uh, hammer it for a while until it uh, really overheats. And you see, well, this, that's a close-up picture, but here you see in the old leaf, there was like a beam here. Now they put the bow speaker there. So you actually have slightly more space than the, the, the old leaf, but still the same similar interior here. So not much change there, but the battery here is be better than the 24. So if you can stretch it and you want the leaf, then go for the 30 kilowatt hour leaf. But there might also be other better options in this. If you have 100 40,000 nook. Okay, let's check it out. Aha, uh -huh, 450,000 nook. You can get a Zoe. Where's uh -huh, okay? It's a 40 kilowatt hour. Well, it's not even a 40 kilo, it's supposed to be 40, 41 kilowatt hour. But the advantage with this Zoe is that it has a bigger battery and it's still a very a fairly efficient car. So, if you want the most range for the bucks around 150,000, you should consider Zoe. Now, this one still doesn't have DC fast charging, you still have to rely on 22 kilowatt AC and you still have that 400 volt uh, you need to charge it on. But overall, though, uh, if you just want to uh, drive, commute it, or whatever, if you don't drive too far and if you're not dependent on fast charging it, then it's a good choice but overall for me um i still would go for something else than soy but that's just me so again people are different so you have to choose based on your preferences and you okay i should mention by the way that there are a few raw four 
This one actually has Chanamo also. So the RAV4 was a, I mean, the Toyota RAV4 was a, was a joint venture between Tesla and Toyota to make an EV. Uh, so they used Tesla components and it's in a Toyota, but you don't find too many of these. So it's like a unicorn and um, uh, by default, it doesn't have DC fast charging, but this one has it. I don't see where it is, by the way. You might have to open the trunk, I mean the front to charge it, but they retrofitted with Chanamo. So you can actually fast charge and you see you have decent space here, quite good space. But it's, um, I haven't tried it, so that's why I can't tell you how good the range is and all that. You see here, it actually claims 178 kilometers. Oh, really, really? And I guess you can read about it if you like. But it's not a, a mainstream, okay, it says 42 kilowatt hour battery, whoa. Yeah, so they, uh, they retrofitted with Chalamo, actually quite expensive, and it has good space and trunk, all that stuff. But So if you want something different and a piece of history, you can get one of these. But I haven't tried it, so I can't tell you how good or bad it is. And if you have 175,000 Nook, you can get the 94 amp hour. Well, this is, uh, what the, yeah, something is very confusing here. 75 kilowatt, that's not the motor power. The motor power is 170 horsepower. So it's, and this 74, this is, okay, it's 33 kilowatt hours. So I mean, I'm even confused when I read these ads, uh, but this is a 33 kilowatt hour battery. and. In many ways, this is way better than a 22 kilowatt hour battery because it charges faster than the, the, the smaller pack and you can have good charging speed up until 80%, 80, 85%, you get good charging speed. And then of course, like the previous one, it's also actively cool. You no, know, there's no rapid gate there. And, uh, uh, but the same power as the previous one, but more range. So overall, a good car. Yeah, uh, but again, you still have the same uh, <laughs> limitation with the trunk and all that. I think there is a picture. Oh, wow, there's a door. Yeah, see here. That's a trunk space. It's somewhat limited when it comes to trunk. But um, yeah, it's still, it's still a good car. But um, I think also, let's check here. At 175,000, you start seeing some other interesting cars popping up. Uh, another thing I forgot to mention about the, the 94 amp hour or the 33 kilowatt hour is that... Um, it comes with the 11 kilowatt onboard charger. Most other cars we have talked about in the past, they only come with 7.4 kilowatt onboard charger or slower even. But here is the first Ionic to appear. So this is, I'm not sure why it is not that expensive, but well, actually, no, no, no. And there was also, I think there was another one that was cheaper than here, but at least this one has some pictures. So for 190,000 Nook, you can get an Ionic, and what was the, the odometer on this one? 70,000, that's not much at all. Uh, degradation on these cars seems to be low, because it seems like they built up a, a buffer in the beginning that they eat up from anyway, so don't expect any crazy degradation. So even if you buy this car, you will still have good, good degradation, I mean, good battery capacity. And what I love about Ionic is that you get so much car for the money. So where do we start? It's one of the most efficient, well actually I still claim that this is the most efficient car, even more efficient than uh, Model 3, slightly more efficient, and you get so much nice goodies, uh, well this one also has the roof, uh, uh, the, the so, so sunroof, but let's see if you have some uh, pictures from inside here, yeah, 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 so you have ventilated seat, you have adaptive cruise control, you have blind spot warning, you have automatic braking, you have touchscreen there, now you don't have, um, uh, app support, that's a bummer, but you get so much goodie and also the interior is nice. You see, sun, uh, uh, um, leather seats and nice soft interior, uh, the dimensions, uh, ventilated seat, heated seat, also wireless charging of phone here and good space in the front here for putting all your stuff, phone or whatever, so nice, nice car and also uh, okay, it doesn't have that big battery. It's about, I believe it's about 30 kilowatt hour total. They they will announce it as 25 or 28. Well, officially it's 28 kilowatt hour. Many ads will say 25 kilowatt. <laughs> but it charges at um, around 65 kilowatt at peak. But um, many cars have tested, well, at least a few cars have tested only charge at about 60 kilowatt. I'm not sure why. It could be winter. It could be something else. But uh, the the... The Ionic is a very, very good car for the money. If you can afford a second-hand Ionic like this one, 
you will be super happy. It has nice space, nice interior, good range, good efficiency, charges fast. It's, yeah, the only downside is that the, the low beam, uh, the low beam is okay, uh, the high beam is shit. So if you buy one, put on some, and if you want better light, you can, I guess, change the bulbs or put on some lead bar or whatever. Uh, yeah, and also uh, another downside with this is that it, okay, it doesn't have app support and um, in order to preheat, you can set schedule inside the car, but you have to be plugged in in order for the preheating to work. So that's a little bit of a bummer, but other than that, it's, it's, a it's, a, it's a good car. Highly recommended if you can afford it. And also uh, this one here, a Chevrolet Bolt. In Norway, they are sold as Ampera, uh, Opel Ampera E. So if you see Chevrolet Bolt, it means that this has been imported from US. I guess they didn't sell that much in US and Norwegians wanted to get these cars. So they imported them and they changed the charge port to be CCS2 so you can charge it in Norway. And um, it's actually a very good car for the money because you have 200 horsepower, you have 60 kilowatt hour battery, you have about a yeah, I would say about uh, 400 kilometers of range. So very good range. The charging speed is not the best. It will peak at 57 kilowatts uh, only. But uh, because it has good range, then you can actually drive it on long trips and it will still be okay. And the trunk space is actually quite okay also. Let me see, do we have an interior? It's okay, it's not, the, it's not the most luxurious or the most premium uh, interior, but it has touchscreen and it, it supports um, Android Auto and all that. So, so uh, one of the minus is that there's no, um, no um, what do you call it? There's no navigation in it. You have, to, you have to mirror the screen and do all that stuff from there, from the phone. And I don't know how it is with the, with the American cars here, but I guess I mean, there should still be some warranty and stuff, right? Uh, or should you go for the for the European one, Ampere E instead? And at 200,000 nook, you will start seeing some 40 kilowatt hour leaf. So the 40 kilowatt hour leaf has obviously a bigger battery than the previous generation. But uh, with this generation, we also start seeing rapid gate. So rapid gate is, um, well, what is it? Well, these cars don't have active cooling, battery cooling. So if you fast charge a lot during one day, or if you hammer hard, or if it's hot outside, and you want to fast charge, it will limit the charging speed. It could be really bad sometimes. So uh, it depends where you live and how far you drive and how fast you drive and all that. But uh, it seems like for most Norwegians, they've been, they've been able to live with it. And then some people who couldn't live with it, they sold it and bought an Ionic or whatever. But uh, uh, the, the strength with uh, Leaf is that you have good space. You have 360 camera that uh, Ionic doesn't have. There's also some auto parking feature, but uh, I don't care too much about that one. I think most people, they like the Leaf because uh, they are brand loyal and they like the space and they like the, that type of interior, I guess. So it's, it's an alternative if you don't like, for some reason, you don't like the, the Ionic. Uh, so yeah, it's, um, but again, the, the whole rapid gate. Uh, now there, there's an update for it where they, they change the, the BMS a little bit to be more, uh, I mean, I guess, even if the battery is hot, you can still charge a little bit faster than before. So uh, you might get it for free, that software update, or you might have to pay for it. But okay, the interior, I feel like it's a little bit outdated though. They, okay, they, they made the outer shell to be different, like, 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 like here, you know? It doesn't look like the old leaf, but they haven't really updated the interior. So that's, I feel like it's a little bit uh, behind there. And then, whoa, this is the first Tesla to uh, appear here. So I will cover Tesla in a separate video, but I'm just showing you that uh, you can actually get a Model S for 220,000 nook, but it's done 400,000 kilometer. But I will go more in detail about uh, which Tesla to choose. Uh, so I will not cover that in this video. I'm looking for e-golf, but I can't find them now. Let me see. There, there, finally, this is the first, or maybe not the first, but one of the first Eagles to appear. And it says 100 kilowatt. So the 100 kilowatt refers to the output power, 136 horsepower. So when you see 100 kilowatt, it means the updated Golf with 35 kilowatt hour, 35.8 kilowatt hour battery. And uh, oh, why is it not loading fast? But um, let's see, you have to look at that. The one thing I like about this new Eagle is the light, the, the adaptive headlights. But I also heard that they, they are very expensive to... Uh, let me see, can I find it here? 
xenon light. Okay, but uh, the lights are awesome, but they are, might also be very expensive to repair. Wanted, they break. But overall, again, with Leaf, uh, sorry, with Leaf, with Eagle, it's a nice car. It's a nice ride, very comfy, a little bit traditional maybe. Uh, I feel like the touchscreen. Let me see if there's any. Yeah, you have a, like a traditional like, gear lever here. Backup camera, that's nice. I feel like the touchscreen infotainment system here is a little bit. Um, yeah, I don't. There's no picture for it, but it seems to be designed for uh, for um, buttons, and then they mutated it in touchscreen. So the touchscreen uh, user interface could have been better, but that's just nitpicking. It's it's still a very nice car for about well, two hundred thousand. Look. Uh, 220 but then in that price range you will be competing with uh, ionic and many many other goods so you see here at 220,000 look you have lots and lots of ionics ionic starts at around 90 190 to 200,000 around 200,000 you find lots and lots of ionic so right now you'll be competing with the uh, e-golfs and yeah i mean i mean with with leaf and whatever so uh, in this price range you see that the, there aren't many actually there are no oh another tesla <laughs> yeah uh, so, but I think at this point it gets a little bit too long and also the cars you see here are, yeah, they are, they're they going to be more and more the same cars that I've talked about. So um, I found out that this is the point where I should end the video because the, the higher I go then it's not too interesting or you might actually consider a brand new car instead of these second hand cars. So yes. Um, I think that's going to be it for now. So hopefully this was useful for you. And what do you guys think? I mean, was it useful? Give you guys some insight in these cars, what to buy, what to not to buy. But I'm not going to tell you, get this car, get that car. No, it depends on your needs, whether you want a larger car, a more efficient car, uh, or a cool car, you know, or something. So it, it, it depends. In the end, you have to read up or look at the videos or whatever and then figure out what is the best car for you because i can't tell you yeah so that's gonna be it for now i hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later